Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a uh, booking video of uh, Best in the World 2012, kind of a do or die booking because I, I do think this show is kind of a uh, one of the most important shows in Ring of Honor history. You know, it's it's kind of like a put up or shut up show. You know, considering a lot of different things, considering the depleted roster, the uh, technical problems on the pay per views, and just the overall average quality of shows. Uh, from Ring of Honor uh, as of late. They just haven't been able to put on that amazing show. It's been such a long time since they've been able to do that. But um, we'll see what happens here. Now, to me, I was really uh, hoping that uh, and even going back to WrestleMania weekend, you know, we heard rumors of Delirious uh, in negotiations with you know, Pro Wrestling Noah talent to bring them in for some of the shows. Uh, that's not going to happen. I'm not so sure if that's a Cornette um, decision or a financial decision or I don't know what it is, but... Um, you know, to me, I, I definitely think, you know, the, the one guy that could uh, that could really bring a lot of life to Ring of Honor right now that could that they, they could definitely get when he when he's healthy again or when he gets his shit together is uh, Kenta. I, I feel like Kenta, along with Daniel Bryan, is the uh, best wrestler in the world right now. I think a David Richards Kenta match for the Ring of Honor world title was something that should have happened, uh, but it's not going to happen. And I'm not going to do a booking video like I did last year. I know a lot of people got pissed off about that because, uh, you know, you saw a whole bunch of Noah talent against, you know, Ring of Honor talent. And I, and I know the, the company's changed. A lot of the, the fan base has changed. So I could totally understand if there's a disconnect when you see a whole bunch of Japanese guys on a fantasy card. I could totally understand that, but you know that's one of the things I loved about Ring of Honor was uh, you know they were willing they were able to work with uh, different promotions from all around the world to spice up the cards because um, you know I think that's what separated them from the mainstream was that they had access to all this different kind of talent and uh, you know mainstream companies you just don't see that you see the same guys facing each other over and over again and now we're seeing that in Ring of Honor right now so it's uh, it's kind of frustrating but um, you know I, I put together a card. I think it's solid. Don't think it's great. I really didn't think I had much to work with. Uh, I don't know who they could bring in for the show. If, if I were to bring in one superstar, one or two superstars, realistically, they would be Mike Quackenbush and Eddie Kingston. This could kind of be the final straw of the whole Chikara association with Ring of Honor. So uh, let's just get right down to it. Ring of Honor Best in the World 2012 from the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. The first match I came up with, we have... Uh, Jimmy Jacobs versus TJ Perkins. Uh, the cool thing about this is, you know, a lot of people are kind of unaware about TJ Perkins. Some people have kind of forgotten that he's even on the Ring of Honor roster, which I think says a lot right there about how Ring of Honor is handling some of the talent. But, uh, you know, TJ Perkins is a hell of a talent. Uh, I would actually say he's a much better wrestler than Jimmy Jacobs. So I think the story of this match is you could do some stuff in the video wire or maybe even on the television show with Jacobs kind of trying to seduce TJ and saying, hey, man, I see you're kind of directionless. Well, obviously, the age of the fall doesn't exist, but kind of the same way where Jacobs saw that Aries was frustrated and kind of directionless, kind of invite him to join the age of the fall. Obviously, you know, like, what's he going to say? Join, he can't say I join the age of the fall because Agent Fall doesn't exist, but you know what I'm trying to say. Just have Jacobs try to, you know, kind of, you know, get TJ to take a walk on the wild side and or the dark side, and, and you know, kind of, I don't know. And, and then and then you could kind of have TJ say, you know, I don't really need that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm a much better wrestler than you. Why should I even pay attention to you? So you know, the zombie princess Jimmy Jacobs could kind of, um, you know kind of get fr get frustrated with uh you know TJ being so stubborn and not taking his advice and then uh boom they could have a match. Now th this matchup right here I, I think it's intriguing as far as the uh what they could do in the ring because they're both small. They're both really really undersized. Uh TJ is definitely the better wrestler so um but at the same time Jacobs has the better personality. So I think that's a nice mix right there. So there we go with that. Um because, you know, and the one thing about that is it, it definitely makes a lot of sense because TJ Perkins definitely is kind of directionless right now. I really don't see him going anywhere. Uh, maybe Jacobs is someone that could actually bring some personality out of him. And then maybe eventually in the future, TJ could actually turn heel and side with the Jimmy Jacobs, Kevin Steen, Steve Carino faction. So that, that's something to think about right there. So next up, we have Roderick Strong versus Mike Quackenbush. So, yeah, the, the big special attraction for the show would be Quack. I know Quack is not as big of a draw as a guy like Kenta. Uh, but still, you know, he's, he's someone that I think people would pay to see on the undercard. Definitely spices things up a shitload of a lot. And, uh, Roger Strong versus Quackenbush is, is a dream match. It, it really is. It's, um, I don't know if it's ever happened before, but the great thing about this is, 
as far as the story they could tell in the ring, uh, Quack has had back surgery and Roderick Strong's the messiah of the backbreaker. So, boom, I think that's the story they could tell right there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that will happen. You can do it for the television championship. Why not? So there we go with that. Next up, I'm going to go with uh, Jay Lethal versus Eddie Edwards. Um you know, it's you know I, Eddie Edwards is um, I, I like him though. I, he's he's had a hell of a year. I was happy when he won the Ring of Honor World Title, but let's face it, he's kind of been shoved down our throats. And uh, you know, you you could kind of I really don't agree with uh, them kind of forcing the whole Davy Richards Eddie Edwards feud on us like that. I thought it was overhyped. I thought some of the matches happened way too soon. I thought they had rematches when they shouldn't have had rematches. Uh, so, you know, I, I think Lethal could kind of, you know, take his frustration out on Eddie Edwards and say, you know, you've, you've been kind of force fed down our throats. The Ring of Honor audience is kind of sick of your dull personality and sick of you, uh, you know, because of your association with David Richards, kind of, you know, because of political reasons, you've been pushed so high over me. Well, I've been on the undercard having really, really solid matches and not really getting the chance to, to prove that I am a main event and still, even though I've been stuck in TNA for the last couple of years, I'm still one of the best wrestlers in the world and a much better wrestler than you and a much and definitely the better overall package. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you could do something like that and then Eddie could just, you know, there's not really Eddie could do in the personality department, but just kind of just go along with the ride and just say, you know, I'm going to prove that you're just a fluke and, you know, that Macho Man gimmick was just a cartoon. You're going up against a real wrestler that has MMA training and, and, and my association with Davey Rich has only made me stronger. So you can do something like that. I mean, uh, so Lethal versus Edwards, I think, you know, the video wire is something that they could really use as a, uh, a tool to kind of, you know, fuel, fuel this whole uh, situation. So hopefully that will happen. I don't think we've really ever seen Lethal versus Edwards. And um, I, th I do think Jay Lethal is the main eventer. And even though he's been solid so far, he really hasn't had that one performance which said, which was like, bam, you know, Lethal is back. You know, he deserves to be in that upper echelon of uh, main event caliber stars in Ring of Honor. So, uh, yeah, so that's a, it would be a big match for him. All right, next up we have uh, Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Both former tag team partners going at it with this. Um, you know, this has just, just been a lot of heat here, man. And, um you know, I, I like the fact that O'Reilly is a heel. I know some people disagree with it, but if, if you have O'Reilly as a face, it, it's not going to work, especially on the mic. You, you can't have him get on the mic at all. He's, he's just that bad. But with uh, Adam Cole's much more likable. You know, I, I, I think Cole is probably the better heel overall. Like because he's you know he has more depth to his character, so obviously he could, he could get a lot deeper than a guy like uh, O'Reilly. But uh, for what 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 they're doing right now, I think it's fine uh, with uh, Cole being the face and, and O'Reilly being the heel. Uh, as far as Adam Cole goes, I mean I, I think he's kind of the one that's going to have to kind of trigger this um, the build up for this match. He's got to kind of, you know, bring to light that, you know, he's had to scrape and, and claw and get to where he is on his own. While a guy like Kyle O'Reilly kind of, you know, piggybacked on a guy like Davey Richards, same way Eddie Edwards did. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, kind of the same kind of dynamic that the Lethal Eddie matchup has. But um, with this, you could just have O'Reilly be more of a jealous type of guy. You know, just kind of jealous of uh, Adam's charisma and his, uh, you know, his his athleticism and, and stuff like that. You know, I think Kyle is actually the better wrestler, but uh, I think Adam Cole just has a lot more going for him. He's definitely more of a super. He's definitely has more potential to be a superstar than a guy like Kyle O'Reilly. So yeah, and as far as this match goes, I mean, it it should be awesome. You know what? You know, they they did they, they Ring of Honor definitely held these guys back at the WrestleMania weekend match. Uh, th I, I'm hoping this would be more like their Chikara Young Lions Cup match where they did steal the show and, and put on, you know, a, a, an awesome exhibition of, you know, great professional wrestling. So uh, there we go with that. All right. Next up. This real I kind of I had a, a tough time talking about this, but uh, there's really not a lot you could do here as far as uh, the match goes. But I think an interesting combination. Uh, would be Mike Bennett versus Eddie Kingston. Now, uh, Lance Storm, I'm not so sure if Lance Storm is going to be available. I, I would actually love to see Lance Storm, uh, you know, come to the Ring of Honor one more time and have, I guess it wouldn't be a rubber match, but it would be the third match. M maybe Bennett could finally go over Storm. So that's a possibility, but I'm kind of banking on Storm not being there considering the send-off he got in Canada. So we'll have Mike Bennett versus Eddie Kingston. Now, this is the type of thing where I could see Kingston being in the ring and kind of calling out Kevin Steen for, you know, taking a shot at Chikara by calling them a Mickey Mouse bullshit company. 
And then all of a sudden, Mike Bennett and Maria come out, and uh, Bennett starts talking trash about how Kingston doesn't belong in his ring because he's a fat slob. And then you know Bennett could, and then the Kingston could kind of start shooting on Maria, and and, uh, and he, I don't know, it's just a lot of different things you could talk about, kind of like the Eddie Kingston Rock thing. It's, you know, you got two guys that are the total opposite. Um, so there we go with that. I mean, I, I just think this would be a much better feud. I mean, a much better promo than the actual match. I would actually like to see them put more emphasis on the interaction in the actual promo and just kind of have a bullshit, you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe could do some type of a um, a no finish because I don't think either guy should really lose in this situation. But I, I think with if you're going to bring Eddie Kingston in, I think one of the things you want to see him do is interact and uh, maybe you could build up to a Bennett Eddie Kingston match later on down the road to continue the association with uh, Chikara and Ring of Honor. So there we go with that. But you know, I really don't see it happening. But that that'll kind of be my little fantasy for this this show. But uh, all right, next up we'll have uh, confirmed. The only match confirmed so far is uh, Finley versus Michael Elgin. And uh, yeah, I mean this will be um, this will be great. I know AMC N One uh, uh, posted a comment how he was. Um, didn't really expect a lot from Finley and Strong. And definitely Finley and Roderick Strong definitely disappointed. I think more of the blame has to go on Roderick Strong because Finley's proven that he could get great matches out of guys like Sammy Callahan. And uh, I mean, I think the list goes on. He's, he's, he's been he's he's been awesome since he's got since he's been on the Indies. So I don't know. But uh, I think the match with uh, Michael Elgin will, will say a lot about Finley. You know, I, I think this this will be great. You know, I, I think this is more of a natural combination. Um both guys are hot right now. Both guys have, you know, really, really got people talking. Uh, you know, Finley and Evolve and then Michael Elgin and Ring of Honor with the match with David Richards. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just it's be an interesting matchup. You know, really not much to say about it, but um, I would just expect a, 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 some great storytelling. And on top of that, I think I think eventually you get a lot of stiffness and just hard hit, hard hitting brutal action. Uh, so there we go with that. Next up, we'll have the Briscoes. Versus uh, world's greatest tag team Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. Now I don't want to see this match, but um, given what happened at the last show, I think it's inevitable that we'll finally see the match happen. Uh, and you know, I'm not going to say ladder war. I, I, I really don't even want to see a ladder match between these two teams. I don't even think that would, that would even be very good. I don't think a cage match would be very good. I think the only way that they could have a somewhat good match is just to have a straight up one on one wrestling match. Just have them go out there and just just wrestle. Let's not see any hardcore stuff. No shenanigans. No table spots. Just just focus. No brawling. Just have a great tag team wrestling match like they should have had a final battle. And just let the fans cheer for who they want to cheer for you know we don't need no heel tactics from Haas we don't need to see no ether we don't need to see any any crazy crap just uh just let them go out there and wrestle and uh Briscoes will just end the feud they'll retain will win back the tag team championships and uh let's have Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin please just split them up Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin need to split up I mean it's it, you have to do it at this point um all right, some people actually think that Charlie Haas is a great heel. Uh, I, I would disagree with that. I just don't think he's that good. You know, I think there's a reason why he got fired from WWE, and the reason is he just can't cut it. Uh, Shelton Benjamin, I think is it, the reason he got cut from WWE is just more of a motivational problem. I just think he's having a tough time staying motivated. But, you know, what could bring some life to both guys is I think you split them up because even though they are tag team partners, Let's face it, you know, Shelton Benjamin has always been the better wrestler, always classified as the better of the two. You know, he, he got more of a shot in the WWE. You know, he, he defeated Triple H on Raw. He had that great back-to-back -back matches with Chris Jericho and, and Shawn Michaels and, and Christian as well for the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, he's just done so much. And uh, I remember when they were both on Bite This, you know, Charlie Haas was trying to pimp his match with Rob Van Dam, telling him, oh, yeah, I know you just beat Triple H, but check out my match with RVD I, I think this is going to be a lot a lot better this time and you know it's just you know nothing Haas did ever really compare it to some of the stuff that Benjamin did it's kind of like Haas was always screaming for attention while Shelton was just naturally getting it so I, I think there's a lot of natural heat there um 
I, I really think there is, and uh, I think it's I think it's something. It's kind of like Haas's last chance. If him and Benjamin can't really excel in a one-on-one singles feud, then it's it's kind of time to pull the trigger. If the tag team thing's not working out, uh, why don't you try singles? Because Shelton Benjamin has proven that he's a great singles star, and and I would definitely like to see Shelton Benjamin at least get a Ring of Honor World Title shot before his his tenure with Ring of Honor is done. At least give him you know a shot. I mean, I think the only singles match he's had was against uh, Claudio Casanoli at Supercard of Honor 6. So uh, there we go with that. But as far as this match goes, I just want to see an old-school wrestling match, some good tag team action, no shenanigans, no crap, no crappy finishes. Just uh, just give the Briscoes a nice babyface tag team win. That's the best you could do here. And uh, maybe they could top their ninth anniversary show match. You know, I thought that would be easy to top, but obviously it, it just hasn't been. Uh, next up, we have uh, Kevin Steen versus David Richards. I'm going to say fight without honor. Now, I know the fight without honor stipulation might sound rushed. Um, me, I'm in favor of not having another, you know, long, drawn-out feud going in the final battle. Uh, definitely not. Uh, I, I, this is the kind of feud that I kind of want to end. I think Davey should, you know, probably take some time off. I think Davey will actually, now I would actually do this. I would have Davey come out at the start of the show and just kind of rip the fans to shreds, just rip everyone apart for, you know, turning on them. And he could actually talk trash about professional wrestling fans, about how they're, how they're all fat and they're spoiled and how, well, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, kind of, you know, kind of shoot on the stereotypical wrestling Ring of Honor fans about how they, you know, always turn on the Ring of Honor champions and the message board and all that crap. I mean, you could do something like that. And, and D- Davey proved that the Border Wars match, that he's a... Um, that he's much more comfortable working heel. I mean, he just embraced that crowd and it definitely felt like the more comfortable Davy Richards, the, the old Davy Richards. So uh, that's a good thing right there. But I'm going to say fight with the honor for a lot of reasons. They just had that fight with the honor with the um, world's greatest tag team in the Briscoes at Board Awards, which was very, very disappointing. Definitely the worst fight with the honor ever. And I know Trademark and other guys have talked about how it kind of hurts the stipulation because it doesn't, you know, it didn't really settle anything. You know, Fire of the Honor is supposed to be a huge deal. You're supposed to guarantee to get a great, brutal match like Danielson versus Morishima, like Homicide and, and Cabana. I mean, there's supposed to be an awesome feud ender with uh, just a lot of vintage action. And we didn't really get that with that other match. But yeah, with Steen and Richards, they could kind of save the stipulation. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't think they could really get it done in the ring without it. You know, I think Steen and Richards have good to great matches, but without the hardcore stipulation, I, don't, I really can't see this going that far. Uh, and, and, you know, Steen and Richards work very well together in a hardcore environment. They had a, a great street fight at Never Say Die from uh, 2009, which was awesome. And uh, they were both involved in the latter war, too, at Glory by Honor uh, 8. So they, they do have a history of working that stiff style with a lot of hardcore weapons. And uh, I think this match needs to be awesome. I definitely think it needs to be a match of the year candidate. They need to go out of their way to deliver something really, really brutal. Uh, Kevin Steen definitely delivers in these matches. And, uh, you know, he... You know, usually they do book Kevin Steen in, in hardcore stuff. You know, I think he could get it done without it, but still, I just don't think the match could be really, I don't really think the match could get people talking unless they do a lot of crazy stuff. And, uh, and, and don't get, get me wrong, I, I don't want it to just be a spot fest. I do still think they could tell a nice story, but I don't want to see Davey win it back. I think you need to have Steen retain. Um, you know, D- Davey could definitely turn heel before the match with his promo, kind of like the same way they turned Nigel heel at the sixth anniversary show with him just ripping the fans to shreds. I think you, I th- definitely think that's something that they could do here. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Steen should retain. Um, you know, maybe you could do a possible heel turn with, with Davey Richards winning the belt back, uh, siding with Jim Cornette. Maybe Jim Cornette could, uh, you know, screw Kevin Steen out of the world title. I know that that was kind of, uh, that whole idea was kind of talked about, you know, leading up to Border Wars. Maybe you could do that here. I don't think they should. I think, you know, keeping the belt on Steen, it feels like a fresh start. I think Ring of Honor is off to a fresh start with Kevin Steen as champion. I, I don't think you want to go backwards and give Davey the belt back. Uh, if anything, like I said, I think if anything, I would, I would give Davey some time off and uh, definitely definitely let him turn heel and, uh, you know, start from the ground up. So, uh, so that's pretty much it. That's Ring of Honor Best in the World. Let me know what you think of this card. If you guys could produce a better card, uh, let me know. Um, just some other things to talk about. Th- you know, this was kind of inspired by Mickey Babylon. I don't know Mickey Babylon is uh, back 
So uh, definitely subscribe to him. Hopefully the guy keeps uh, jamming out videos because uh, he is that good. So I uh, have a link in the description for him. Uh, thanks for everyone for responding to the top 20 dream matches. Just, I mean, I, I think those uh, all those lists indicate that the, the talent in professional wrestling is still there. And it's, it's probably higher than it ever was. I think the problem is you, we just we just the talent is just so spread out and we're just stuck in these promotions where you just you can't see any inner promotional matches. So I think that's one of the problems right there. So um, but yeah, just a lot of great matchups that you guys voted for. So thanks for the responses. Uh, as far as um, Raw going three hours and Impact going live, I, I really don't care. And I know I'm not the most loyal wrestling fan. You know, I really don't like talking about this kind of stuff. You know, I, I'm I'm not as a uh, hardcore fan as a guy like Brian. The next big thing, we're two totally different fans. I'm I'm just the kind of guy that just likes to focus on the good stuff. That, that that's just me. Uh, but as far as the three hour Raw goes. Um, you know, I, I I really don't care. I mean, it, it's, I really don't watch the whole show in its entirety. I just watch certain segments. Um, but at the same time, I think the positive about it is since they're not really doing a um, the brand extension anymore, they're having SmackDown guys on the show, it's going to allow for more stuff to build up on Raw for people to be connected with it. Like they really, you know, they really didn't have enough time to experiment with with stuff between Danny Bryan and Sheamus leading up to WrestleMania because of time restraints. But now with three hours, maybe you don't have that. Uh, maybe you have a little bit more luxury to build up some of the SmackDown stuff.